All right, Cyberpunk 2077 finally got the DLSS 3 frame generation update, and currently I have it turned off. We're gonna try using it, give you some thoughts on it. Right now you can see that my FPS is a little over 40. And you notice I got two stats counters here, one on the left, one on the right. Um, the one on the right I'm using is the NVIDIA overlay because that'll show us the average PC latency. Because one of the things people talk about with DLSS 3 is the increase to PC latency. Um, the uh, frame time graph on the left hand side is showing you the actual, um, uh, how should I put it, so frame time, time between frames, whereas PC latency is time in between an input and the frame being processed, which is why it's a bigger number. Now we're around 40 FPS now, why? Well it's an RTX 4090, but playing the game at 4K with the graphic settings um, maxed out. Actually, you know what? Let's kick on the ray tracing all the way to Psycho. So, uh, as far as it goes, they haven't added in the RT overdrive to the single player version of the game yet. Okay, so that's all processing. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're a little under uh, 40 FPS now. Average latency is somewhere around 50 milliseconds. And now, what I want to show you guys is if we kick on normal DLSS, like let's go to maybe DLSS quality, something like that. It has its own pros and cons. There can be uh, difference, you know, the main pro is, right, you get a better frame rate. You can see that now we're over 60 frames per second, and also look at the average PC latency. The latency has gone down uh, to around 35 milliseconds, right? So the latency has decreased when the frame rate increased, and that's normal. That's what you expect um, when playing games. It makes the game feel more responsive when I swing my mouse around, uh, that kind of thing. So DLSS 3 frame generation, this is why I don't like it compared in bar graphs. Like, it, I think it's a good thing, and let's try it out here. But DLSS 3 frame generation is going to be a little bit weird. So when I turn this on, um, first of all, it automatically kicks on super resolution as well, but you can control that independently. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that... Uh, turn the super resolution off. Super resolution is where it decreases the game's render resolution and then tries to upscale it using its machine learning trained um, algorithm. Uh, all of that. That's the DLSS 2 that you're used to. Frame generation can work independently of that. Frame generation does a whole different thing. Uh, give it a second to kick in. Things will stutter a little bit while it kind of processes. Uh, but frame generation is going to hold back showing you an actual frame in order to insert an AI generated frame. And you can see that I'm getting a similar boost to my frame right here. Now I'm up to around you know, 66 frames per second. But notice that the average PC latency is now in the upper 60 millisecond range. So there's a slight increase to latency uh, compared to when I wasn't using frame generation. And when you compare this similar frame rate to what I got from DLSS quality, the latency is actually significantly higher. Now, what I will say is in a single player game, does that really matter? Um, well, only if it is noticeable enough to you in actual use uh, to cause a problem. Now, that's what I'm kind of trying out here. I'm just sort of swinging my mouse around. Maybe we can pull out a gun, get you know the police mad at me. And you know what? I feel like it can aim just fine. It's not throwing off my movement. It's not throwing off my aim. So I think overall, well, I think you have to acknowledge that it does increase latency instead of decrease latency like a, um, you know, like normal frames do. Uh, it does provide overall better motion fluidity. Now, that's probably not going to uh, show up that well to you in a YouTube video because YouTube videos are locked to 60 FPS. So you can't see when I'm getting more than 60 FPS. It doesn't really show up correctly even when I'm getting lower than 60 FPS. Uh, that kind of thing. By the way, if you're seeing screen tearing, I'm doing an external capture card at 60 FPS, so if it, uh, without VSync enabled, because that would throw off the frame rate measurements, that kind of thing, and, and latency. Anyway, so uh, keep in mind <laughs> any of those issues. Now you can combine these together. So if I use DLSS uh, quality along with the frame generation, give it a second to kick in. But let's see what goes on to the uh, frame rate now, because the DLSS 2 quality is going to give me more real frames, and then the DLSS frame generation is going to give me more of those generated frames. And you actually see that my frame rate now is a little over 100 frames per second, but my PC latency is in the mid 40s, which is about where it was originally when we were around that, uh, you know, 40 uh, 40 FPS range. So it, it's kind of a weird sort of situation, but I will say 
it does let me get to 100 frames per second. Uh, you know, we get all the nice uh, ray-traced reflections, all of that. Um, I think the game's still overall looking pretty good. So there's definitely pros and cons to using this. Um, it's not perfect, but I think personally, I am going to be using it. For me though, the question is just, you know, do I want to use it with normal DLSS or not? Because I've done a whole video on DLSS in this game. And while it's, it's great overall, it gives you some big, um, you know, image quality boosts, I do notice little bits of like, uh, aliasing in the, in the lines in the pavement and certain objects and things. I don't think up, upscale super well with this, but the nice thing is if you're willing to combine these two and even go a little bit more aggressive here, if we go down to the balanced setting, so this is lowering the render resolution of the game even further uh, on DLSS 2, but then keeping the frame generation on. Again, give it a second to process here. Remember the actual, the DLSS 2, the super resolution, does actually help input latency. So again, input latency, uh, not too terrible here. Frame rates are now uh, over 100 FPS. And again, this is at 4K with the uh, psycho ray tracing, all of that. So using lots of trickery to get there, but I've, I've got to say the overall experience I think does end up pretty good. If we go down to DLSS performance, then give it a second to kick in. Uh, DLSS performance plus frame generation, we are now uh, over 120 frames per second, which is uh, what my 4K monitor is capable of anyway. Now, keep in mind that um, there can be some issues where now if you go over your, your monitor's refresh rate and you don't want to have screen tearing, um, you would normally kick on VSync. However, VSync is not compatible uh, with DLSS frame generation, which is kind of interesting. So you can get such a high frame rate that you go over your monitor's um, max frame rate cap. And yes, even on a G-Sync monitor, uh, you would then start to see tearing because you're beyond your monitor's um, frame rate cap. Uh, there is a help, uh, there is something you can do for that though. In the NVIDIA control panel, uh, turn on a frame rate limit, but don't set it to, like in my case, 120, or even slightly below that, 118, set it to half of what you want. So if you set a frame rate limiter to 58, for example, it would frame cap the game to 116 when you're using um, frame generation. And I've noticed that does a pretty good job of uh, removing the tearing and not causing too many issues. So if we uh, did DLSS uh, performance normally without frame generation, let's get the uh, comparison here. So notice that basically the best you could do without frame generation was still pretty good. We could get up to 80 FPS um, and the PC latency down um, a little bit under 40 FPS. But this is using, again, DLSS performance. So overall, very happy that they've added this to the game. Um, frustrating that only the, D, uh, the uh, 4000 series NVIDIA cards currently support this feature. Uh, there's no promise that it'll ever be added to previous generations. They currently uh, claim that the optical flow accelerator hardware on the um, older uh, the older GPUs um, is not able to support it. So, you know, I don't know how true that is, because <laughs> there's definitely an, an incentive for them to want their. Uh, you know, a reason to buy their newer hardware, and they're definitely trying to use DLSS 3 as the uh, the marketing feature. Now, AMD is promising an FSR 3, which is supposed to do something similar. Uh, no promises on the image quality or the, um, you know, how, how well it works. We haven't seen it actually out in the wild yet, but they generally try to support all hardware, including older NVIDIA hardware, so it'll be interesting to see if that does anything for us. So here's the game, again, running natively. Uh, maxed out. I'm down in the 30s. Kicking on that frame generation, I, you know, using it from a baseline frame rate that that's that's that low without any of the DLSS 2, um, is where the input latency does become a bit more noticeable. There's also the image quality issues. Honestly, guys, you can definitely nitpick the image quality issues, and you can find problems. Maybe while I'm driving, more would show up, that kind of a thing, uh, where you get some bad frames and all that. Um, but I think that the 
the benefit you get from the increased fluidity of the motion, for the most part, I think is made up for, um, you know, I, I think makes up for any negatives from, from the um, frame generation algorithm. So in general, I guess what I'm trying to say is I think this is overall a positive. I think most people would prefer using it on to using it off, although I can't, you know, guarantee that's going to be the case for everybody. I think it looks pretty good. Um, I think it helps the motion fluidity. It does increase latency instead of decrease it. So yeah, you got that. Um, but one thing I'm liking right here is that um, while I go on this crime spree because I'm a bad driver while I'm talking, <laughs> One thing I like is that I have the option of using frame generation without DLSS2 because um, DLSS2 in this game has some definite pros and cons to the image quality, but overall it kind of bugs me a little bit. So I'm gonna personally play around with maybe just shooting for this kind of 60 FPS target, maxing the game out uh, just using frame generation because frame generation is a native 4K image on the real frames, and then it has generated frames in between. Um, so I think it's an interesting option, at least. Because certain objects in this game, like the glass when they're drinking out of cups, things like that, I don't have the time in this particular video, I've gotta get to work in a second to uh, do side-by-sides and all that. But I have a different video exploring um, DLSS uh, 2 versus FSR 2, so maybe I'll link that, uh, that you could explore. And um, you know, there's definitely some some cons like with image ghosting and things like that to DLSS 2. So having the option to just use DLSS 3 I think is pretty cool. I think the latency is a bit more noticeable uh, at these lower frame rates though. So when you combine the two, it does help control the latency a little bit. And the last thing I want to mention is that this also added NVIDIA Reflex to the game. Now, you ha have to use Reflex when you're using DLSS frame generation. Um, and that's helping to reduce and control the PC latency. So, probably fair to mention that before we had this option, so let's wait till things kind of process. Okay, so things seem to be kind of baseline here around 45-ish milliseconds if we're looking at the latency right now. If uh, we turned off the low latency, uh, which got added in, I think, with the DLSS 3. Give it a second to process and to kind of stabilize here because it's up around 100 milliseconds. Wow, is it really actually, is that really where we're at without the, uh, the uh, late, uh, low latency? Yeah, so it seems like the, um, the, the addition of the NVIDIA Reflex is doing a lot to help out the, uh, the, the latency feeling in the games, because again, kicking that back on um, really, really cuts down that latency. Um, if you guys watch the counter, it went down from about 100 down to about 46 in this particular scene, that kind of stuff. All right, guys, I've got to get to work. Sorry I didn't have time for all the editing of side-by-sides that I usually do. I'm sure some other channels will get on that. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that the update was finally here. I had a lot of people wondering, when will we get DLS3 in Cyberpunk? It's here now, I like it. Um, I think overall, I prefer playing the game with it on to with it off. But again, I wanna be honest about any of the downsides when it comes to um, both image quality and latency. I think they're, they're there, so you should. it's not fair to compare it in bar graphs as like equivalent to real frames. But I don't think they're huge issues and it's, you kind of have to nitpick to to find them, to be honest. So, anyway, uh, here's the game. Uh, totally cranked uh, DLSS performance plus frame generation. Getting myself 140-something uh, frames per second. <laughs> um, but again, I think the DLSS 2 going down to the performance setting, the image quality is more noticeable of an issue hit than the, uh, than the frame generation, at least to me personally. I hope all of you have an excellent day.